my name is Stefan Fischer. I'm doing uh, the challenge from Harald with this, uh, uh, what's it called, Chinese uh, cracker things a couple of months ago he had, and I decided to do a book review. So this is my first talk and my first lightning talk, the talk at all at these meetings. And the book review I'm going to be doing is this book. It uh, looks very fancy, it's actually not very expensive, that was my first surprise. A hard cover that cost around 300 crowns from Springer. That's a bargain just to start with. <coughs> uh, so, just uh, about a bit about me then, and uh, why I care about this real time C. Uh, it's called Efficient Object Oriented, -oriented and Template Microcontroller Programming. So I am started out as an electronic designer doing uh, hardware, uh, then shifted slightly step by step, and now I'm uh, running using C++. Uh, I'm graduated from KTH in uh, I have my own business where I do consulting for small companies here and there. Uh, I've been doing this microcontroller thing with C for since, since ages. Started with a sampler, then C. And uh, I started this open uh, source project many, many years ago, also when I was at uh, KTH, uh, called GURBD. It's a viewer for GURB files, which is an output from CAD tools when you do the layout. Uh, and uh, the reason I started with C++ was my quest for a safer C to, to, to <coughs> improve the, the, that the compiler finds and that my code is correct when I finally run it. Uh, and uh, the special thing about microcontrollers, what is that? The, uh, uh, compared to a, an ordinary PC or a workstation or, or internet servers and stuff, it's that they have like very limited in CPU speed, which you, you can't do too much too often. Usually like 8 megahertz up <coughs> to 32 megahertz is probably the no, I, now I run 120 megahertz, so now it starts to get really fast. So uh, we have limits in raw, RAM in the in the. I heard uh, Paul talk about six gigabytes uh, RAM disappeared. I have 16 <laughs> kilobytes. <laughs> uh, I also have the limits in in uh, program memory. Of, uh, of uh, my program can't be too big either. Uh, I have direct access to the hardware from my. So it's really close to the metal programming, and that, that's where the electrical engineering degree comes in. So it's a lot of... Uh, and we have the limited value, you can't do graphics, or you can actually do graphics. I've done a couple of graphics, but then it's not like a, uh, what's it called, GUI tool and stuff. You have to like move a pixel here and a pixel there, and, and really tweak your hardware so it, the images flow, etc. Uh, so when you write this embedded programs, you have to optimize the program very well to get it this small. So I have turned off exceptions. I have no exceptions. I have no RTTI, like real-time type information. It's also disabled. To get speed up, so I have to uh, relax the processor and put uh, the burden on other stuff, like using interrupts and uh, DMAs. Uh, I do pre-calculate a lot, lots of tables always. I cannot use allocate and deallocate in memory. And I also have to avoid dynamic bindings, which gives a, a kind of limited part of C++ you can use as an embedded program. So we go to this book then. I attended a course a couple of months ago in uh, embedded programming for C++ 11 and 14. And to my I had bought this before, but to my surprise, the guy also gave out this book as a course literature. This must be one of the few books that actually for embedded C++ programmers, at least modern C++. And this one is divided into three sections. <coughs> now I have to get my sheet notes. <laughs> So it talks about language technologies, it's the first section called, and it goes through C++ in general with like a, a slant for this embedded world. And then uh, 
the components for the real time C++ is, is uh, registers, how to start up the CPU, uh, low level hardware access, memory management, multitasking, and these kind of uh, components you need for doing embedded uh, C++ development. And the last part is called mathematics and utilities. Since you have limited CPU power, you cannot run floating points. You have something called fixed point. Uh, they have like filters. It's very, very common in, in uh, embedded environment because you read sensors and you need to filter the data input, etc. And some utilities to be used when you're doing embedded development. And uh, I go through all the all separate section here, this is basically the, uh, the content or what's it called, table of contents of, of this book. But I have a quick summary of each part here. So getting started, is, yeah, it's the getting started with this real-time C++, it goes through the simple start. Uh, working with the real-time C++ on the board, he has uh, so he takes an AVR CPU, like a microcontroller from Atmel called AVR, and uh, puts a light uh, LED on and stuff. There is already one out there called Arduino, which you can you can use the Arduino environment, but you can also use it like directly. So I'm not sure really why he chose to build his own, but uh, he goes through how to do it. Uh, <coughs> Then it goes into the easy jump start, and it's a C versus C++ uh, comparison, and, and see what you need. Then object-oriented techniques, uh, like what, what to use in um, uh, object orientation for the embedded microcontroller. Templates, as someone said the template program is probably very common in microcontrollers because you have to do the same thing, but slightly change all the time. So. And then the last chapter is the optimized C++ how to optimize for a microcontroller, basically. And uh, all the, the chapters are, are named like use, blah, 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 use, blah, blah, blah. So it's very hard for tips on how to, to what you should use to get this uh, microcontroller, the small <coughs> program and, and, and effective programs to run. And then it goes through the... <coughs> components to use in a microcontroller that you can like steal or whatever you call it. Uh, accessing microcontroller registers since you have the access to the hardware and stuff directly. You, you, this is, he, he shows one way to access uh, ex external register and stuff. Uh, I don't like it really. The, 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 the teacher I had at this course, he, he thought he was brilliant. So yeah, you can... Uh, uh, chance for yourself. Then we have the right start. That is uh, in, a, in a microcontroller you have to take care from the power on of the microcontroller all the way up to the your program is actually running. And uh, <coughs> he, he explains what, what sets, uh, you have a reset handler or who calls who, who initializes static objects and where do you do that and copies and blah blah blah. And then you can start running your main. And he goes through whole, whole, the whole part of how that works. Uh, he has a low level hardware drivers, also accessing the register, going accessing the, the drivers and the, the hardware in the microcontroller. As I said, you can't use uh, allocation and deallocation of, of the memory, uh, really, but can use, you have this custom memory management, you can you do it yourself or you can take some help from here and there. And, and the last uh, part in this chapter is the C++ multitasking. And he, he's, um, he's showing some things and it's, it's basically uh, he calling function after function after function and then pulls back and calls function after function. So it's not a really advanced uh, real-time operating system thing. But, uh, yeah, it's a simple stuff. So, and then he has this mathematics, and then I come. He comes to this floating point mathematics, um, where he goes uh, through this uh, how that works, and he usually uh, he uses this Jason Turner term, uh, const expert everything. So, do as little calculation in your microcontroller. Do do it beforehand. <laughs> 
then he comes. He explains this fixed point mathematics, which is like a simple version or, or floating point. Uh, you have to keep your track of everything, but it, it, you can get a kind of floating point, but in a much faster way. Uh, he also talks about high performance digital filters. As I said, uh, uh, when you have a microcontroller, you usually have it for reading sensor data and stuff, and you need usually to filter it somehow, maybe. And he goes through that here. And then he has like a little chapter on C++ utilities. Good to have, like putting here and there. And then we, uh, <coughs> extending the C++ standard library and the C STL since we can't use alloc and allocation, memory allocation, a lot of things in the SDL just disappears. You can't use that, you can't use that, can't use that, can't use that. And you can always like invent your own maybe, or, or with, which you have better control over, etc. And then there, in the end there's an appendices there with a tutorial for this real time where you can learn more of C in general. And then he has as I talked about how, how he handles register, he is the, I think it's the greatest thing in the world, so he has like designed an environment on you can use and etc. He goes through that. And uh, then there also this when you're compiling it usually runs it on your PC and download to the, the embedded board, etc. So here he just uh, explained how you build your own uh, GCC compiler, cross compiler and uh, that's, uh, you have to be in for the long haul there when you do the comp compilation. And in the end, he also shows the microcontroller he used in his example, so he's, he's a separate ch chapter about that. And uh, <coughs> this is my review of it, and I think it's a good book if you want to read about C++ from a microcontroller. Uh, you have lots of interesting exam examples. Say it's not a CS book or a computer science book. It does not explain these algorithms and stuff. That that's for some other book maybe. Uh, I have uh, been programming a microcontroller since 1995, so I have like a kind of good knowledge. So it's hard to understand how other things. But I I, I understand microcontrollers, and then it, it's much easier for me to grasp things. Okay. If you have been programming this before, it, it, it's always helpful to, to do that. Uh, all the chapters are sometimes uh, kind of short on details. You find, oh, this is a very interesting chapter. And then you read and like, where is the hardcore stuff? And it's always a, a reference to another book or another chapter in another book. So that's a, it's sometimes a, a, I understand it. if it shouldn't be like, like the Bible, then you, you can't have too much text, but sometimes it's like, couldn't he written or talked about this a little bit more? That would have been great. Uh, so how I started with this was like, uh, there was a video on Vimeo. That, uh, Michael Barr is he's the Barr group guy, but um, this Michael Wilk had this talk, getting started with C++ in embedded systems. It, it's a, uh, if you have like a code base in C, how do you go over to C++, do it C++ step by step? And it's very interesting to, to read up on. And I had another link before, but I changed it this uh, two hours ago. I said there was this was the only book before, but in January here in yeah 2019, this book. Uh, showed up on this packed uh, publishing company. I have bought the book as an ebook. I have started to read it. Uh, I'm not finished it yet, so I'm not really time to read it. But the, uh, it's a tip to, to if you're still into this uh, embedded. So he, he maybe get some competition soon. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, what I had to. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, always to go to widen your yeah. horizon, so to speak. So you're like, oh yeah, I can optimize this, but 
sometimes it gets a problem because when you go to this server, you start to, no, I can't do this because it's not optimized. But then you realize, I'm not on this microcontroller anymore. So you have to think that, uh, oh, okay, I, I can actually use all this. But it's a good thing to, to read up on and, and maybe learn to, oh, maybe I should use this instead, of, even if in my desktop uh, mm -hmm. to get it optimized. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was wondering <coughs> sorry, uh, who is the uh, target audience for the book? You, you mentioned that it, it helps that you have experience working with microcontrollers, uh, that it helps that you have an electronics background. Uh, how much background knowledge do you need to have to be able to understand the book, be helped by it? Yeah, I, that's hard to say. Uh, um, Today there, there's a lot of, of uh, I think it's, it's, it's aimed for people with ha which has done like some microcontroller programming uh, in C or, or this maker movement things. So if you have like one or two years of experience, I think it's a very good book for introduction to, to the C++ part. But it also, as I have, uh, of 25 years of, of uh, embedded programming in C. I also find it quite good and, and, and uh, uh, good, give, give me good ideas on how, how things should be done. And yeah, what are your thoughts on using uh, emulators during development? Uh, do, do you mean emulators like a big box next to the board or? or Maybe something just in, in your development environment so you can debug and do stuff. Yeah, um, the emulator, I think of as the word emulator. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. Yeah, <laughs> maybe from, from the 80s, no, 90s, it was this big box you connected to. Yeah, the, that, the, that's not what I meant. Okay, okay. Uh, simulator. Yeah, the simulator, I, I was kind of skeptical about it. But the last week I have started to change my mind. Okay. <coughs> Because I, I used the simulator of the I O. I can't pronounce it in English. E I A R <laughs> for their development, and uh, uh, surprisingly many bugs I could squash by just running it on my PC. And it was uh, very, very. In the beginning, I thought, "Oh my God, it's complaining everything, and it's kind of wrong." But it was a legit complaint. <laughs> so then, hmm, maybe this is good. <laughs> Uh, you talked about fixed point, and we actually use fixed point math in our games to mm -hmm. make sure the simulations run the same across different computers. We've mostly just pulled in an old implementation and stolen it from somewhere and used it. Open source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you think there are lessons that could be learned here that could be applicable in? Yeah, always as a, if you use fixed, this is not like a special embedded microcontroller fixed point. It's a general fixed point, and if you know. Uh, if you use fixed points, you should know what the limit. There are limitations, and you should know about them and, and how you go around them. And this can, maybe is not the best book for the fixed point thing. But this probably special books about fixed point, but, but uh, <laughs> this 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 gives like an overview of the whole. So if, as I said, all the chapters are usually kind of shallow, so to speak. So so if you want deeper information about something, you usually have to go to a better source about you, just that, so. Based on your experience, which are the benefits of using C++ instead of C on microcontrollers? Uh, oh. <laughs> I just basically finished one of my first real C++ microcontroller project, and uh, I found that the, the, the it was easy extendable. If I wanted to to extend the clause, I could easily do that. Uh, either it was through inheritance or just adding stuff into the, the class, and it, 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 it the code got compartmentalized better in in, in C plus plus, I think. So. Yeah, and and is there a benefit of using object oriented? approach here 
a real benefit of using yeah, that? Yeah, actually, you, you, uh, object orientation is like a big subject, but, but I think if you had a driver, for instance, mm -hmm. usually when you do like Linux thing, you have like this driver over there, which some genius has written, but for, mi for microcontrollers, you have like direct, direct access, and you have like three SPI po spy ports, for instance, mm -hmm. and you can just write one and just instantiate mm -hmm. three, and, and this kind of thing is very neat. You, you write it for one, and if you have three of the same, it's like, chup, 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 and then you have three. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I do. I also had like a timer, it had like three timers, and each time I had a channel, but then I could create like bind together timer with the channel and got a new object which I could use. And so a lot of this driver and talking to hardware was very very nice with the object because it is actually an object, <laughs> so to speak. So, did, you have? did I get the feeling that the other two books you, you gave was better than the one you talking about today? No, uh, the, the other one was a video. The first one was a video that was okay. uh, uh, introduction more or less, like how you go from C mm. to C++. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the other book I haven't read yet, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know, but it's newer, thicker, and uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I come back on that. <laughs> Everyone's hungry? Yay! <laughs> <laughs>